Hello Bayview kids, welcome to a brand new month. It's the month of February. I'm excited to be with you today. Are you excited, Miss Stephanie? Very excited. Wonderful. Well, when Miss Stephanie plans out what we're gonna say, she always likes to include a joke. So I thought this time that I would also include a joke. And because it's February, kind of the month of love, we have Valentine's Day in February, I thought I would do a love theme joke. You ready, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. All right, what did one piece of toast say to the other? I don't know. Well, you're my butter half. Oh, because you put butter on toast when you eat it. That's right. It's like, you're my better half. Like, will you be my Valentine? You're my better half. Okay. You know, Valentine's. Okay. I think the rule of thumb is you're not supposed to have to explain your joke. So <laughs> boys and girls, maybe it's not a great joke. But anyway, we are excited to share about not just mushy gushy love, but about Jesus' love for us. So the word of the month is compassion. And that's how God shows his love for us by looking out for us, for caring for us, by all those things that we see in the Bible. So every week this month, we're gonna be looking at a specific story of how Jesus showed love and compassion for someone. So I'm excited. My favorite stories in the Bible are the ones about Jesus, and we are gonna hear that all month long. All right, before we get into our worship song, we are gonna go to our special segment, and we are gonna hear about love. Hi, BB kids. Welcome to our love segment for the month of February, where we're talking, of, like I said, about love. Ooh, love. Last month, we had tough questions with Pastor Sawyer and it was a bit heavy. And this week is more fun and lighter. We're going to be talking about love with Miss Hannah. So that's right. All right, should we go for a walk? Yeah, let's go. Well, Valentine's Day is coming up, so we definitely have to talk about love. Miss Stephanie, how do you feel loved? One way I feel loved is when people help me. So maybe chores or I help them. That's how I show them love. So yeah. How about you, Miss Hannah? Let's keep walking here. Ooh. I feel loved around the holidays. I love spending time with friends and family around Christmas time when the snow is coming down and it's warm with candles and gifts. It's so special. Just a fuzzy feeling. Warm fuzzy. How else do you feel love, Miss Stephanie? I feel love when other people spend time with me. So maybe they're building blocks with me, going for a walk, hanging out. I just, I feel so loved when, when they're with me. Well, I love Candyland. It was one of my favorite games as a kid. I am definitely the family champ of Candyland. And I love winning. That's true, she does love winning. Playing dolls with friends, or more like chatting with friends. Or sleepover parties. Sleepovers. Maybe this represents shopping with friends. I love Miss shopping. Loves to shop. Yeah. Well, I think we're getting to the heart of it, boys and girls. I love, can you guess? Chocolate. Chocolate is the best. It just makes you feel so nice when you eat it. Oh, it's just the best. I could swim in a chocolate river. Ugh. Well, Miss Stephanie, do you think this is what love is? It's just that gooey, wonderful feeling you get? Yeah, I don't know. Like, is that it? Just, you know, like putting a piece of chalk in your mouth and feeling satisfied for a minute or winning or hanging out with a friend for a minute or a few hours and feeling satisfied? I don't know. It feels like there's got to be something mm -hmm. more. I think there is. I don't think love means pleasure, like feeling good. What does love mean then? You know what we should ask? You know where we should look? Where? The Bible. Well, boys and girls, it's all coming back to me. At my wedding, we read this verse from 1 Corinthians 13, and it goes a little something like this. It says, love is, dot, dot, dot. We're gonna fill in what it is. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it doesn't boast, it isn't proud, it isn't rude. It isn't self-seeking. Love does not look for its own interests. Love does not become easily angered. It doesn't keep a record of other people's wrongs. It's not happy with evil, but when it's full of joy is when the truth is spoken. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So love isn't chocolate. No, although I love chocolate, love is not chocolate, you're right. Love is about being kind to people, being patient not keeping a record of wrongs, all those things. I can't say, Stephanie, I love you, and then smack you in the face. That would not be loving, no. Well, Miss Stephanie, I think we've uncovered something. Maybe just a little bit of something. Yeah, scratching the surface. Just scratching the surface. I think we're gonna find out the source of love next week. 
All right, boys and girls, it's time for our worship time. So let's stand up and worship God together. Six books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 4. Verses 14 through 30. Even though Jesus was on this earth for 33 years, there's still not much we know about his first 30 years. We do know that he visited Jerusalem for the Passover feast with his parents. He learned carpentry skills from his father, Joseph. And when he was about 30, he went down to the Jordan River and asked his cousin, John, to baptize him in the water. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus rose from the water, God's voice called out from heaven, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. It was an incredible way for Jesus to begin his ministry. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Spirit of God. Anytime he visited a new town, he went to the place of worship, the synagogue, to teach the people. You are the light of the world. Isn't he just the bee's knees? Everywhere Jesus went, people were amazed and praised his teaching. That is, until he got to Nazareth, the town where he had grown up. Well, if it isn't Carpenter Boy Jesus. Hey man, where you been? We hear you talk real big now. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went into the synagogue. An attendant handed him a rolled papyrus. The scroll of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived hundreds of years before Jesus, and God had spoken to Isaiah about a Messiah who had come to rescue God's people, and Isaiah had written down every word. Watch that papyrus as you unroll it, a bit crackly. 
Jesus stood before the crowd of worshipers and unrolled the scroll until he came to the right place. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to announce the good news to poor people. He has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners. He has sent me so that the blind will see again. He wants me to set free those who are treated badly. And he has sent me to announce the year when he will set his people free. There was silence as Jesus rolled up the scroll and sat back down. Everyone stared. Today, this passage of scripture is coming true as you listen. <gasps> Jesus hadn't just read some dry, dusty, ancient words. Jesus had declared that he was God's Messiah, that he was there to announce good news and bring freedom to the poor, the hurting, and those who had been mistreated. But well, he's Joseph's son, isn't he? He can't be the Messiah. What I'm about to tell you is true. A prophet is not accepted in his hometown. Mm. Words are easy. He calls himself a prophet? I studied with him on those benches right over there. Thinks he's something special because he can read a scroll. All around the synagogue, people rose to their feet, glaring. They turned on Jesus. You are not welcome here anymore. That's right. We don't need you making things up. The people were so angry they forced Jesus out of the synagogue. He allowed them to herd him straight through the village all the way to a cliff on the edge of town. Get rid of him! Throw him down! But Jesus simply turned and looked at the people, sorrow in his eyes. The men and women that he'd known and loved growing up wouldn't accept who he was. The crowd couldn't face Jesus. In their anger, they had missed the whole point, that Jesus had come to make things right for those who were hurting and overlooked. Jesus walked right through the crowd, away from the cliff edge. They parted to let him go through. Then he left Nazareth and went on to Capernaum, where he continued to carry out his mission. In our lesson today, Jesus says that he is the one sent to fulfill those things written in Isaiah, bringing freedom, healing, and hope to all people. And Jesus let everyone know his purpose in life, that he showed compassion to those who would otherwise be overlooked. His purpose was to bring the good news to everyone. And Jesus fulfilled that purpose when he died on a cross for the sins of the whole world. That's how much compassion he has, and that's how much he cares for us. Being followers of Jesus means that our heart has joy for things that bring him joy and our heart breaks for things that hurt him. So if we're gonna follow Jesus, we should have the same kind of purpose. We should show compassion. Following Jesus means caring about others. And I want you to think about this for a moment. Who is overlooked at your school, on your team, in your neighborhood? How can you be like Jesus by showing compassion to them? Maybe it looks like sharing an encouraging word or note with someone who is often overlooked. Maybe it looks like bringing a meal to someone in the neighborhood with your parents. I don't know what it looks like for you to show compassion, but I'm guessing that you are starting to think about it. For some of you, you might feel like the one Jesus was talking about, the one who feels overlooked and excluded from the group. And if that's you, I want you to know that God sees you and knows your situation and is always with you even when it might be hard to see. Let's pray that God can show us how to care for others and to remind us that he is always with us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for keeping us safe in this cold weather. And I just pray for two things. I pray that you can help us to remember to be compassionate like you are towards others, towards the overlooked and the people that are excluded. And I pray that if we're feeling that way, that you can remind us that you're always with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, go grab your younger brother and sister for our preschool service.
Inviting people is fun. It's true. I know a story about another party, too. Listen to this. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. Oh. <laughs> hey, friends. Story Jane. We are ready for a party today because that's what our Bible story is all about. Are you ready for a story? <laughs> well, then let's. 
let's go! One day, Jesus told a story about a party. Wow, look at this party table. It can seat lots of people. Did you know when you invite someone to a party, you call them your guest? It's true. And when you have a party guest, you want them to feel loved and welcome, and you want to have your table ready. Okay, so we have our table for the party, but it looks like we're missing a few things. Now, what does the party table need for our guests? Those are some great ideas. I think it needs some plates. On the count of three, let's yell, plates, please. Ready? One, two, three. Plates, please. <laughs> That's better. Now, if we're going to have plates for our party guests, I think we need some food to put on them. We don't want the guests to be hungry. Hmm, what should we serve for dinner? <gasps> Raise your hand if you want spaghetti. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want chicken. <laughs> Coming up. Wonderful. Now our guests will have plates and food. Well, we want them to have fun, too. Let's decorate for the party and have music. On the count of three, say, decorations, please. Ready? One, two, three. Decorations, please. <laughs> yes, now it's a party. We have plates and food and music and decorations. All we need is to invite the guests. Hey, who would you invite to a party? Those would be some great guests. Now, when Jesus told this story, he was teaching us something very important. Jesus said, everyone is invited to the party. It's true. Everyone is invited to the party because Jesus loves everyone. Jesus said, no matter what you've done, no matter where you live, I love you. No matter what language you speak or what kind of food you eat, I love you. You can be a super loud yelling singer or a super quiet whispery singer and Jesus loves you. If you have brown hair or blue hair or no hair, Jesus said you're invited to my party. Jesus loves everyone. <laughs> oh, hey Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who does Jesus love? Jesus loves everyone. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who loves everyone? Jesus loves everyone. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus loves everyone, including me and you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Ooh, ooh. Jesus loves everyone! I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I'm gonna invite everyone to this party, which means I need to make a lot more invitations. So, I'll see you guys next time, party friends. Everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Well, boys and girls, we hope you enjoyed that story and you realize that Jesus loves everyone. Well, I'm gonna do a little quiz with you to see if we really understood that Jesus does love everybody. So I'm gonna name someone and you're gonna tell me if Jesus loves them by saying yes or no. So, does Jesus love your teacher at school? Yes, that's right. Does Jesus love your grandma and grandpa? Yes, that's right. Does Jesus love the bully at school? Yes, that's right. Jesus loves 
everyone. Well, we hope you remember that, boys and girls, and have a wonderful week. See you next week. Bye-bye.